These individuals will be really small. This habitat and these ants mean everything to the survival of another animal. Let's go. Oh, you ready? Go find it. The dog is here to search for it. Should be a target-rich environment. Hey. Your typical detection dogs are gonna be used in law enforcement. Obviously, this is not a law enforcement context. Conservation dogs have been used with other species, but we have not seen them used for the Texas horned lizard. Efforts to restore Texas horned lizards where they were once common have involved years of research, captive breeding programs at zoos, and so far, only one lizard sniffing dog. It's definitely a conversation starter. If we're successful in this effort, we'll find horned lizards on the landscape. A lot of Texans my age or older, they have fond memories of horned lizards in abundance. People tell me about when they were children, they would play with them in their backyards or find them in the dirt lot in the neighborhood and that they were just everywhere. The Texas horned lizard really represents my childhood. As best we can tell, the Texas horned lizard disappeared from much of its range in about the mid 70s. And that coincided with a lot of things on the landscape. The fire ants get a lot of blame, and they deserve some blame. But they're not the only factor. At the time, a lot of people were waging war on the, on the harvester ants, the big red ant mounds. And also at the time, coastal Bermuda was being planted in pastures. And these lizards need harvester ants. They need native bunch grasses, not a turf grass. And they need to be in areas without fire ants. There are quite a few zoos now getting really involved in conservation of native species in the state of Texas. The Houston Zoo is raising Houston toads and releasing them. The Fort Worth Zoo is raising horned lizards and releasing them. The San Antonio Zoo is raising horned lizards in what they affectionately call their lizard factory. And so this is a wonderful thing. Zoos are really getting involved in conservation in their backyards. Our main goal here is to produce as many Texas horn lizards as we can. I am just putting some ants in his little ant feeder. Horn lizards have a very specific diet. They feed primarily on the red harvester ant, and if they don't get a sufficient number of ants or termites in their diet, they just die, straight up die. A notoriously difficult animal to keep in captivity, let alone to get to breed and produce viable offspring. It's a real challenge. We'll see how they're feeling. We put the male lizard into the female lizard's tank with around 25 healthy breeders. We're hoping we can get a bunch more babies this year. That licking and those signs of head bobbing are both of them kind of communicating with each other that they're interested. A single female lizard can lay over 40 eggs in one clutch. It's still a little bit early in the morning for them, so these guys are still warming up, so they're, they're taking it a little slow right now. Anything with animals, it's, it's unpredictable. It's kind of up to them if we're gonna be successful or not, but I have a lot of hope we get to put those babies out in the wild. I want to thank everyone who came here today. Big year, big milestone for us. Today, we we're fortunate to release 84 captive-born Texas horned lizards on a ranch in Blanco County. Our first release, very exciting. Y'all good? The landowner has been managing for native biodiversity since he purchased the ranch. This site includes about 1,000 acres of very high quality horned lizard habitat, several hundred harvest ramp beds. In general, one or two lizards per mound. We can come back for these for a different location, yeah? Yeah. This is the culmination of three years of work when we started this project, breeding lizards in captivity until we had sufficient numbers to conduct our first release. Though these lizards have never been outdoors before, this is a homecoming of sorts. This is our first horned lizard released to the wild. This one little lizard marks the return of a species to this landscape. Y'all don't step on it. Oh my God. <laughs>
<laughs> if you step on a lizard, we're probably going to not invite you back. <laughs> it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to return these lizards to the wild, but not just any place, to paradise for horned lizards, where we're hoping that they're going to establish a viable population. Don't run away from me, please. That's going to grow. For years, we've been hearing from landowners that they want to have horned lizards back, and we do too. And so uh, there's been a lot of research that's gone into determining what kind of habitat these animals need, what kind of threats we need to avoid. And today, all of the forces came together for horned lizard reintroduction. Going about our daily lives, we may not notice the changes in the landscape that squeeze out certain species, but they certainly do. The native grasses and forbs that you see in abundance around me are also key for quail habitat. And there are quail coming back on this ranch. There are other species like native pollinators and migratory birds that depend on exactly the same sort of habitat that good land management creates in this part of the state. I'm going to let him go because he wants to go. I really hope I see him again. So, once you release a load of well-camouflaged lizards, how do you hope to find them again? We're going to go to work. Let's go. That's where the dog comes in. Sit. Go find it. We released 15 or so lizards between me and that stand of trees. Off, come. The goal here today is to try and find the lizards that we turned loose a week ago. Grin. She's starting to peter out. The fact that we haven't seen any lizards yet and Gren hasn't smelled any yet, it still doesn't mean they're not here. They're just really good at hiding. It's kind of a windy day, so she may not smell them. But we'll come back in two weeks. Uh-uh. Go. Get over. Animals in nature are never entirely predictable. Uh-uh, come here. But months after the first release, a small but hopeful sign. Maybe. She's indicating. Andy. Yeah? Yes. You see where her nose dropped? Two or three of us will spend a couple of minutes looking to see if we can find what she smelled. I'm not heartbroken that we didn't find lizards because we found scat that came from a lizard, so we know there are lizards out here. That's definitely horned lizard. Good girl, Grant. The lizards that we released back in October, at least some of them, survived the winter, so that's really encouraging. Yay. Yay. Hello, guy. Our strategy is to release around 100 lizards per year on this site for three years. Ongoing releases will improve the odds of establishing a self-sustaining population. My hope is that in the future, we will find the offspring of the lizards that we've released still on this ranch. And my true hope is, is that we'll find lizards on the next ranch, and the ranch over there, and the ranch over there, returning horned lizards to the landscape so that Texans can enjoy them forever. Huge milestone for the San Antonio Zoo. Very exciting. But even one release on one patch of restored habitat can provide a lot of hope. See you, Moon? Yeah. I would say the horned lizard is probably the reason I'm a biologist today because I could catch them. They were the only lizard not faster than the little boy. And they're gone now for most of our landscape. And so it's like a part of my childhood is gone. But today my son was here and he held his first horned lizard and he released that horned lizard back on the landscape. It's a glorious day. <laughs>